One of our last stops of the day, folks, will be the Unionville Cemetery, which sits on the outskirts of town. You can see it's rather scenic. Now that we're on the outskirts of town, this is one giant basin, 360 degrees. The cemetery today is still used. A lot of pioneers, a lot of miners. You have to understand something. The town really only had 10 to 20 years. The 60s, the 70s were good years for Unionville. Like I said, it exceeded $3 million in silver. One of the best preserved schoolhouses was built on the hill, which I showed you previously before. Here's the Nightstone, very new, 2010. Like I said, these are family plots for Unionville. Some of them are miners. And the best preserved building in the town is the schoolhouse, which I just showed you. They named the school Buena Vista after the canyon. Now keep in mind, that's one of the best preserved schoolhouses in all of northern Nevada. Out of all the ghost towns I've been to, that is one of the best preserved. This is a hamlet. So this cemetery is from, derives from the hamlet itself. It really never was a town. Some people call it a town. Some say community, hamlet. I would say it's a town. Before Mark Twain called himself Mark Twain, when he came to this town, he said, I'm Samuel Langhorn Clemens. And so he lived and he prospected here. He's not buried here. But you can imagine that he probably attended a funeral too. Times were harsh. People died in the mines. Unionville was the original county seat for Humboldt County. As I was telling you guys earlier, uh, founded in 1861. And then the seat was relocated to Winnemucca in 1873. What's in there? A dead rat. Oh, God. Water. Tammy says there's a dead rat in water. Plug the nose. Oh, God. He fell in and couldn't get out. That's a Mojillas, right? Mojillas Louise, who one of the roads that goes where you see that house over there, that's Mojilla. The road was named after her. And the park's named after her as well, I believe. I don't know. I have no idea. There's no formal government in Unionville, but there was at one time in Pershing County. It was the original county seat for Humboldt County. Back before it was Pershing County. And in 1873, when Winnemucca grew too large, they took the county seat. Some of the graves are bruised and battered. You have to understand that when the town declined, they transitioned. All these places that you see around here are ranches. And that's what Unionville is today. It's a ranch and farming community rather than a mining community. But it booms in the 1860s, 1870s brought millions. And people, I mean, yeah, as many as 1,500 to 3,000 people at times were here. The decline also was speeded up due to the Central Pacific Railroad in Humboldt Valley. And then Winnemucca was established and things began to die. But this, this has one of the best preserved ghost towns, one of the best preserved schoolhouses in the Wild West. Also, the Mark Twain cabin that he built still stands. There's a lot of little interesting features. It's not a very friendly town, though, as I was saying. But today, the cemetery is still used for burials. And, of course, they had, they had a politician. His name was Paul Lavieca. And he was one of the prominent, more well-to-do citizens that were, was here. And he came from Mexico in 1841. The only member of his family to come from Mexico up to Nevada. He came here to the state in 1866, worked, for, worked as a miner in Unionville, and after he was a miner, in 1868, I believe, he opened up a restaurant, a lodging house, and he ran it until the 1880s. And then he left for Winnemucca, like most people did. When Winnemucca opened up and the railroad came through Winnemucca, that was it. Everybody went there. 
He was the postmaster of Unionville. Businessman, well respected, courteous to other citizens. Probably was more courteous than what some of these people have been to me today. He was the treasurer for Humboldt County before this became Pershing County. He went to work as a treasurer for Humboldt after he spent over 20 years in Unionville. And he started from nothing and worked his way up the ladder from mining to a business owner to being working in politics. The history that's connected to Unionville is amazing itself. Like I said, I just wish people were more friendly because if these people were more friendly, I'd be more than happy to promote their businesses here. Most semi-ghost towns, people come up to me, they tell me tales. It says it on the website, the locals will tell you tales. Nobody wants to tell this guy tales. They're scared of me. I guess they've never seen a guy with black nails or a bandana. They probably think I'm a gangster. Truly, I'm just here to appreciate the history and the fact that Mark Twain had built a life here at some point during his career. This was a great ghost town. And there's Star City. See that giant peak, Star Peak? And that's not too far from where Star City is. You gotta drive up this uphill on this seven mile narrow road. It's treacherous this time of year. And we were there less than a year ago. And that was its sister city. But what went from boom to bust, this was one of the finer towns. Many saloons, stores, businesses, restaurants, lodging. And now it's all gone. And the cemetery is a symbol of what remains. And I'm sure there's many unmarked burials. And this town had a few thousand people. And some of these men probably died in the mines. For example, James D. Gisselman died. He could have been a miner. We don't know. But I thought I'd just do a little documentary, show you how little I feel in this massive basin surrounded by snow-capped mountains everywhere. And there's an old wood marker. And I'll show you a few markers and then I gotta go and I gotta take a few photos before I head out of here. This is Lord Rick. Check out our site, www.paranormalghostsociety.org for ghost towns, caves, catacombs, churches, haunted sites, UFO cases, historical sites, extreme off-roading, outdoor exploring, abandoned towns, mysteries, the paranormal. Check it all out in our investigation archives. You will not be disappointed. We've done 1,100 trips and investigations. We're a very active site. We opened our doors in 2001. We bring a lot of business to historical sites, especially bed and breakfasts and haunted inns. And if you're nice to me, I'll be nice to you and I'll send you customers all year round. But if you come out there yelling and being rude to me, you will not have our business. It's a shame because I want to give this place business, but at the same time, the way I was treated is just, I don't know what it is, but every time I've been coming out in this region towards this way, uh, last time I was shot at and threatened and by five guys with guns, and this time around, have a bunch of belligerent people that are coming out of their houses with dogs wanting to rip your face off practically. In memory of all departed brothers of the IOOF who rest eternally in this hallowed ground erected by Buena Vista, Lovelock, Nevada, 1949 instituted in Unionville, Nevada. That's a nice memorial. Just a memorial for those who passed and were part of that fraternal organization. Tammy was pointing out to me there's some kind of skull. She says there's no teeth. Does anybody know what this skull could be? Maybe a dog, a canine? There's the vertebrae. Could be coyote. Look, these are the eye sockets. And then here's the, the medulla, or the um, vertebrae from the, that attaches to the spine. Huh. Good find. Good find. Oh yeah, one last thing, ladies and gentlemen. As you can see, I videotaped the skull. It's probably a coyote skull or something, but I want to make one more point. I've been going around grave to grave, and these wooden debris piles we used to be the fences. If you look over here, straight ahead, it seems like the mother's 20-something, 30-something years old, and then there's a child next to her, 13. If you look, this has been toppled over, this has been toppled over, toppled over, 
This is smashed to bits. You cannot even read it. Terrible. It just fell back and broke into eight, nine pieces. And it looks like they tried to fix it with metal bolts for reinforcement. And it failed. Sorry, I was videotaping sideways. Let's try this again. Looks like they put metal reinforcements and it fell back and shattered into three, four, five, six, eight pieces. This is vandalism straight up. I showed you guys the skull. Some of the old graves. Over here seems like a mother and a, maybe a son buried. There's a 13 year old child and a mother. Let me go check it real quick. Here's the fencing for these, for some grave plots and yeah. Age 37. England in memory of John George and then next to it is native of Alaska 13 years old Cots Kinkeed native of Alaska died September 18 1872 13 so it could it's not a father and son as I had proposed no less it's still a part of history how did an Alaskan native of that age make their way down here. I guess during the gold rush they came down into California and then they cut over into Nevada to make their dreams come alive by silver and gold mining and a lot of times people went bust like Mark Twain. Don't feel so bad if Mark Twain can go bust anybody here was on equal ground. Some just were successful at sniffing out that gold and silver and others ended up becoming one with Mother Earth as they met their fate in some of these mines. Life was harsh out here in the wilderness, or what's left of it. It's beautiful country. There's salt flats, if you look. Left over from ancient Lake Lahontan or Lahontan Sea. As you can see, I did not see these graves, but this cemetery is a little deplorable. Native of Mississippi, John Stampley, 1873. 20 something years old probably died in the mines such a young age to die but people only live till their 20s and 30s out here life was harsh but a lot of graves now that i look at it there's been either a lot of vandalism or this place has seen it's it's good days and bad days there's a lot of rat holes there's here you go in memory of dosha lucas bailey died in 1863 wife of james bailey killed by indians how's how's that for hitting home that's why people did not live long. Indian raids, burnings, murder, prostitutes were murdered at the bordellos. Life was harsh out here. People killed one another, outlaws, shootouts. This town didn't have as much crime, but still, the Wild West was pretty lawless until the later 1800s when the U.S. Army and sheriffs and laws were written and enforced. Back then, though, there was no laws, so people did what they wanted in places like this. And this cemetery probably has suffered vandalism. There's no doubt when you start seeing stones broken in half, tipped over. I could understand the wood rotting and getting a hundred mile an hour winds over Star Peak and destroying these wooden fencing fences. But I cannot understand why some of the graves are broke to pieces. And so this is the whole purpose of investigating this location. Is so that we can preserve it for years to come. And try to tell people, enjoy it through our site. And if you visit here, take nothing but pictures and leave nothing but footprints. Because it's in bad, it's in bad shape. This is a burial mound you see here. And they have rocks outlining... There's probably two burials outlined in the graves. But I have a feeling there's a lot of unmarked graves here as well. And I'm sure there are some that are not marked or have been vandalized where people have taken the stones. I don't know why people do that. Yeah. The killed by Indians was freaky. I guess that's why everybody here has a short lifespan. If they weren't killed by Indians, yellow fever or cholera or other diseases may have wiped them out. Mining accidents. Life was harsh out here. This is so remote. Sister City, which is Star City, is probably 12 to 15 miles away. And in Winnemucca, you're looking at another 30 miles away. So life was, you were out here for the long haul. That's why people died. 
It was just too harsh to survive here. That's why this town went bust, really. Before I go, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to go have a seat and just kind of relax. I probably won't be getting any more footage or pictures. If that's all debris that people are dumping, I don't want pictures of trash. I want people to see the town for what it is, the history of it. A lot of historical sites, remnants like the wagons. We want you to see that. And when this gets put on our site, you guys are going to enjoy it. Did I get any EMF or GOSP readings? No, it's at a one. It's just not enough to say that there's ghostly energy here. But I did take EVP, and we'll let you know if it turns up anything through our site at www.paranormalghostsociety.org. Tammy pointed something out to me. There are pieces of bone scattered. I picked up one of the pieces. It's very porous. A lot of bone fragments. Now, there is a skull nearby of a coyote or canine, possibly. And so, you could see where the vertebrae and spine was broke. So, maybe that's what these are, is yeah, scattered. This looks like something's been ground up. Dug up here? Yeah. Well, maybe not dug up, but ground up. You know what I'm saying? Like, if they tilled the land or something. I don't know. They may have tilled it, or flooding from the snow melt. Uh Come in, yeah, it's all downhill. It, it could wash up some of the bones because this some of the cemetery, there's low spots. Like It's just peaceful. I think this is the best part of the town. I don't have anyone staring at me. Piece down there. Just a piece of glass. I want to get pictures of those yellow flowers. Well, honey, there's some right over here. Was there? Yellow ones? Yeah. There we go. Little buttercups. Baby buttercups, as I call them. It's almost spring here. It shouldn't be this warm, almost 60 degrees. Let me point out there was bone fragments. I just wanted to film. Here's another one. Just little white pieces of bone. This cemetery has seen better days. Here's a grave site right here. Just a pile of rock. It's sad. It's very sad. At least we can preserve what's left of it on our website. So make sure you check it out. Though, right here, the winds, the crosswinds coming down off those mountains, it is strong. Oh, well, like this one's tipped this way, so maybe maybe the wind pushed it down? I bet you there's more graves than what we see. It's just too wide open not to be. Wow. It's an interesting cemetery. Is that a guy or is that Jared? Oh, that's Jared. <laughs> at least I don't have dogs barking at me or people trying to get their dogs to attack me and stare at me and threaten me and be rude. It's a nice town, but I think some people have been living out here too long or are paranoid. That's what I think. Part? Yeah, because you just scared me when you're like, is that a oh, guy? No, Jared's taking close-ups of us. He's being at watch. I'll zoom in on him. He's got a ball cap. He looks older with the ball cap on. It was a wealthy family. Yeah. You mean a well-to-do family? Yeah. Well, let's see. 11 months, 27 days. Gone to join the angels. This this wrought iron, this ornate wrought iron back then, this was probably a mine owner or a mason. Someone who had the ability to... They probably made the, the stone themselves, but they still had to buy the slab, and then they had, if they were a mason, they would carve it themselves. But the ornate work from 1891, they probably had a stake in the mines up in these mountains. That's what I'm saying. I mean, it's just so nice. <laughs> you don't see stuff like this uh -huh. currently. You know what? This cemetery is nicer than the whole town. Okay, the town's nice because I like the wagons, I like the old lights, I like the creek flowing through in the nature. If they want to bring business to this town, like the bed and breakfast, they really need to treat these people who visit here nice so they'll come back and, you know what I'm saying, and get a room and, and things like that. It has to be accessible. The history has to be accessible to people like us. And I heard over the years that it's getting less accessible I mean, I heard over the years that it's less accessible to ghost town because people are buying up property, building farms and ranches. They like the creek that flows through. And I understand it's scenic and all. If you like this type of life, this is the middle of nowhere. And if the world goes to crap, you could probably live off antelope in the creek for so long. It's so pretty, though. 
but survival would be hard if you had an infection or needed to go to a doctor. You couldn't do it out here. You, if you got bit by a snake, some of these people were, yeah, mountains all the way around, but people were bit by a snake, a child playing, and he didn't, and there was no doctor, physician, or no anti-venom back then. You were, you were a goner. You were a goner. Times were rough. This is just shows how rough they were. You have children buried here. I'm closing out. It's your founder, Lord Rick. I'm out of here. It's time to hit the road and go to Lone Mountain Cemetery in Lovelock, Nevada.